Good morning, Fran. Um, when it comes to Jameer Young, what do you have to do better to defend him this time? And I know you talked about how much he wants the ball at crunch time. Is there anything you can do to limit his touches or make him give it up in critical possessions? Well, I mean, it, it, there's only a certain amount of things you can do with a guy like him. He's so quick and crafty. Obviously, like you just said, you want to limit his touches. You know, you can trap him and live with other people. Uh, of course, they got a lot of good other good players, so you're going to open something up. But uh, you just got to make him work that much harder. Try to limit his touches. You know, maybe trap him occasionally. Try to get him going right. Uh, but you know he's shoots his jumper going right, and he and, and he gets all the way to the rim going left. So he's he's tough when he's getting downhill. So it, it's got to be a collective effort. I guess is probably the best way to answer it. Uh, Tyler Tashman. Hey, Fran. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, I know you've you've talked about the fact that Price has practiced well. Um, just curious, like. What exact is that energy? The way he's shooting it. What what exactly is he doing well in practice? It's everything. You know, he's being aggressive. He's making shots. He's getting on the glass. Uh, he's really getting after it. And I've been really proud of him in that in that regard. Uh, Tom Caker. And as the season goes on, the rotations tend to tighten up. That's just the natural basketball. Um, but do you have to talk to some of the maybe the younger players as that those rotations get tighter so they understand what's going on in the game? Yes, yeah, sometimes. You know, I think we have an intelligent group. Like the other day, for example, Tom, you know, we had a we had sort of a group on the floor that was clicking. I don't think there's any explanation there. That team really got it going. I mean, and I didn't even have Ben out there in that stretch. And he was great on the bench. You know, sometimes with the younger guys, you're right. You do have to continue to encourage them. Uh, but you can't lie to them either. You know, they're going to get to play. Uh, how much they get to play will be depending on a lot of things. You know, how is the game going? What do they bring to the table? Who's in foul trouble? Did somebody tweak their ankle? Uh, you know, I think the most important thing is just to encourage them to stay ready because the opportunity is coming. Uh, Chad Leistico. Hey, Fran. Um, your program has such a strong track record of upper half, top, you know, even higher the Big Ten finishes. Um, I'm just kind of curious, like, what attributes would you attribute to, like, kind of being able to do that year after year? Because as you can see, it's not that easy in the Big Ten. You know, I, I think that's a good point, Chad. And I think this year, maybe more than any, which I think is also your point, uh, I mean, every team is loaded. Every team is well prepared. Uh, somehow, some way, you got to figure out how to win close games. And that's not easy. Uh, but I think, you know, what you try to do to keep your team the best it can possibly be is, you know, try to create a culture where. Guys know how to compete. Guys legitimately care about each other. Guys understand, you know, what our philosophy is at both ends and and what game adjustments we might, we might have to make and how do we follow the game plan for that particular team and, uh, you know, and stay the course. You know, sometimes you lose a couple or you lose a tough one, you know, you – you tend to stray away from the things that have typically worked. And we try to you know, kind of stay true to who we are. Uh, Elliot Clough. Good morning, Fran. Um, I, I feel like we talk, I mean, I don't feel like I know we talk about Owen a lot on these. Um, he, he just got that eighth freshman of the week, second most all time. Um, I, I guess to maybe phrase it a little bit differently, is this something that maybe you expected or saw as a possibility for him? And then one quick thing after that, uh, how's his tooth? Has he gotten any work done? You know, that's a good question. Uh, as of yesterday, he had not. You know, everything's going to have to be capped. Uh, he doesn't seem to be worried about it. 
the, the, the first part of your question, you know, from the minute he committed here, which was early, as you know, uh, I thought we had something special. You know, I mentioned, you know, in the summer how well he was playing and how well he played overseas. So you could kind of see it coming, you know, and I continue to, you know, try to build that confidence in him because that's, that's the critical thing, you know. He didn't have the greatest start to the game the other day. And then he has 17, 14, 4, and 4. And, you know, quite honestly, along with a couple other guys, the reason we won the game. But his ability to sort of dominate inside is a difference maker, you know, for us or for any team for that matter. And every night in this league, you're going up typically against a veteran big guy who's really good. And just coming to the realization that that's who you are. You're one of the best big guys in this league. You know, it, maybe it's a little earlier than a lot of people thought, but, you know, he's certainly proven that he can be one of the best players in our league. And I'm really proud of him. And, and he just keeps continuing to grow, I think, in terms of his overall game, but most importantly, his confidence level. Tyler Tashman. A while back, uh, Peyton, Peyton had kind of vividly recalled when you had offered him, you know, on a phone call, um, just wondering if, if you remember anything from that or just anything from, you know, recruiting him. We, we recruited him really hard. Uh, you know, I had gotten a phone call. Uh, somebody had watched him. A friend of mine had watched him uh, in a game in the summer and said, I think this guy's good enough. And then it was during the dead period that that guy was at the game. And uh, shortly thereafter, he played in the live period, and I saw him. And, you know, not, it doesn't work, doesn't happen this way all the time, but if you know, somebody recommends a guy to you, you go see him play, and he has just a, just an absolute monster game. He had, eight, he had eight threes in a game. I remember that. And uh, he just looked like a guy – that would fit perfectly with what we do. Obviously, his shooting is elite, but you know he's six seven. He, he can put it on the deck, and he, he can make a play for somebody else. And he he gets to the glass, and he, he just plays hard. He constantly moves, and you can tell he loves the game. You can tell that he's been well coached, uh, that he really knew and understood the game. And you know we're a motion team primarily that runs fast break. And I thought you know this guy is going to be special. And, you know, I just, I told him that, you know, I, I, I called him up and, and told him that and told him I wanted him. And, you know, there's no hesitation. Hey, you know, we like you. We're going to continue to follow your part. No, it's like, you know, I want you to come here. I want you to come play for me. You know, you'd be a great hawk. And I wanted him to know that there was zero hesitation on my part or anybody on the staff. And then from that point forward, you know, we, we went to his games. We called him on the phone. You know, at, at, at some level, it was a pandemic year. So it was a lot of phone conversation because we weren't allowed to go to some of those games. Uh, but I before the pandemic hit, you know, I went to his games uh, more than once. And uh, and then during the pandemic, we did it all over the phone. Uh, Mike I, Floss. I remember, he, he never even took an official visit. Because they weren't they weren't allowed, but he had come up unofficially before the pandemic hit. Sorry for interrupting you, Coach Mike Kloss. Right. Getting back to Freeman for a moment, uh, he had those few games where there were foul trouble and frustration. I'm guessing nine out of ten freshmen would have maybe spiraled from a, a series like that, but. He did not seem to. What is it about his makeup? Well, you know, he 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 comes from a basketball family. I mean, he just grew up. His parents were both players, and mom's coach was a coach, is a coach, and uh, his brother's a player. So it's it's kind of ingrained in him. You know, I think our staff has done a good job. You know, my assistants. You know, we're constantly talking to him, watching film with him, working with him individually. You know, 
if your numbers aren't good because you're in foul trouble, it doesn't mean you're, you didn't play well. You just have to figure out how to play defense at this level against really good players positionally without chopping down and without picking up, you know, a, a silly touch foul, with, which puts you on the bench and figure out uh, that we're better when he's out there. You know, and that's something I continue to try to encourage him. Like, like, Oh, we need you. We need you out there. Like we, we can't have you in foul trouble, you know, and sometimes, you know, you go, you go try to come from somewhere and to block a shot, you know, the score is six to four. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, maybe maybe if you're a little bit late, you just call up and hope he misses and stay on the floor. So there's an art to staying out of foul trouble, and he's figuring that out. Uh, Chad? Yeah, circling back to what I asked about earlier, I mean, you guys are two games out of third place at this point, two and a half out of second. Is part of, as, as a coach, is part of your, I guess, how do you go about kind of, zeroing in on the lineups you need in these last, you know, eight, 10 games of a season. Cause it seems like that is a strength this team has had in these upper division finishes, like finding your lineup, finding how the pieces fit. Cause every year the teams are different. That's true. They are. And this one in particular, uh, because, you know, the, the, the torch was sort of passed from the leaders we've had in the past. And I've been proud of those guys. You know, we have some different options, Chad. Like, and we can go small. We can, we can go big. Uh, I'm very comfortable going going eleven deep. I haven't had too many of those teams. Uh, and like you said, the hard thing sometimes is, you know, you want to play all those guys and give them ample minutes. It's hard. You know, if you're DeSante Bowen and Brock Harding, you don't play as many minutes to go in there and impact the game when you do get the opportunity. Both of those guys have done that, as has Price. So you just try to keep them all ready and understand specifically what they bring to the table. And, you know, I think, like we said before, the, the veteran guys are, are going to get the bulk of the playing time right now, the guys that have consistently produced. It's great to have... You know, Patrick back playing the way he's capable. Our key guys are performing well. And and we have different ways we can go off the bench. So, you know, it's it's in terms of the like your point about, you know, where you sit in the standings, like we don't even bring that up. We just try to practice hard, learn from our mistakes in the last game, get better in practice, prepare for the next opponent which, as you know, is going to be different. I mean, everybody plays differently in this league. You know, you're going to see pressure. You're not going to see pressure. You're going to see changing defenses. You're going to see half-court man. You're going to see great post play. You're going to see great guard play. Uh, and our guys, for the most part, have been have been through that and, and I think really take a – an intelligent approach to to getting ready for the next game. And then if you take care of business, then that other stuff will take care of itself. All right. We'll have two more questions, coach. Uh, first one's Mike Voss. Uh, Patrick started 60 games in his career and now he's coming off the bench. It, 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 did, was there any adjustment in that for him? And it, it seems like he sort of found a niche or at least, seems comfortable from, from where I sit. How would you describe it? Well, it was really kind of interesting because, you know, I talked to him about it. I talked to Josh about it. Obviously, when Patrick got hurt, Josh performed really well. <clears throat> and not that I was surprised about that. And and with additional playing time, he's continued to to play extremely well. You know, and they both said, look, I mean, they both literally said, you know, we don't care which one you start. They both know they're going to play. Uh, and I think you make a good point, Mike. I think Patrick is comfortable coming off the bench. Uh, he is way more verbal as a leader than he's ever been, and that's been important. You know, the guys respect him. And res I think respect the fact that he's accepted that 
that role is, you know what, I've been a starter, but you know what, Josh is hooping and, and I'll, I'll come off the bench and I'll do what I can to help our team. And when I'm on the bench, I'll talk to the young guys and at practice, I'll talk to the young guys because he was that guy at one point. So I'm just really proud of him and how he's responded. Uh, last question is from Elliot Clef. Brandon, in that same vein, um, I was going to ask uh, about Patrick and, and Josh. Are you are you pretty much set with, with your starting five going through the rest of the season? Is it a game-by-game game thing? Do you think Patrick I think we'll stay with what that? we got right now, you know, with okay. Josh. I think that's working. Uh, and, you know, that's the case a lot of times. But, you know, sometimes somebody else gets hurt. God forbid, we hope that doesn't happen. <clears throat> but we got a lot of guys that are ready to step in uh, under any circumstance. All right. Thanks for your time this morning, Coach. Appreciate it, guys.